Well, thanks for joining me in my shop. Oh, I'm about to perform an alignment on this radio. Now, we just finished uh, clearing a short in the tuning capacitor. And I still have some concerns about the output tube because of the evidence of overheating. You see the melted part of the cabinet here. It's also a melted wire that was in contact with the uh, output tube. So, but for the life of me, um, I cannot verify that there's anything wrong with that tube. The uh, cathode resistor may be the wrong size. It's a 22 ohm resistor. The circuit diagram shows a 220 ohm resistor in that position. But when I take measurements, the cathode bias is proper at uh, almost exactly correct minus 7.5 volts and the cathode current uh, which is the tube current is about uh, 35 milliamps and according to my tube manual uh, the quiescent current can be 50 milliamps much higher than the 35 so at this point I have no reason to think there's anything really going wrong with the output tube now this this melting thing may have been from an event in the past maybe a defective tube, I don't really know. I even considered whether this might be the wrong tube. I, I don't know how that can really be. Um, I cannot read the number on it. It's been rubbed off from too much handling. But uh, I have no reason to think it's not a 50C5. I don't think there's any other tube you could plug into the radio and it would work. Um, just out of the blue like that. So I think that has to be a 50. C5. So basically the radio is ready for alignment so that's what we're going to work on in this video. Now luckily I better turn on my signal generator and frequency counter get ready. So I got a great set of instructions here. What's so great about them is the print is finally big enough I can see it with my eyeballs for crying out loud. Seems like often I'm working with information that's printed so small I need a magnifying glass to read it so that's not the case with this so uh, first thing of course is uh, to align the IF and you can see two tests that have to be performed to do that in both cases you're feeding a signal into a pin on uh, one of on the same tube I believe no two different tubes tube 1 and tube 2 using a 0.05 microfarad capacitor to, uh, well, they call it a dummy, but... and away we go. So let's start with this. First, uh, oh, you can see my signal generator is at 455, 454, it doesn't make much difference. And we need a 0 0.05 capacitor here. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Okay. The radio is switched off right now, so we have to go to pin one of vacuum tube number two. V2 is the 6BA6 located right here. So let's let's tip. No, oh, this will be a little tricky. I gotta tip this guy up on its side. I'm gonna need it on its side anyway. Because I have to access the bottom of the radio to tune the. Uh, well, maybe not. Let me do a quick check here. See if I can. Top one, bottom one. So I can do both from up on top here, but I can't make the connection to the uh, tube for the IF frequency. Hey, you know what? Maybe I can, in fact. Hmm. No, pretty awkward. Pretty awkward no matter how you do this. So you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to cheat again. 
I'm just going to pound in the uh, output of the signal generator into the antenna connection. Oh, was the antenna connection was something we needed to look at. In my checkout video, you, you see I discovered something unusual about this antenna connection. So let's just verify. Hey, it's not hot. It hasn't got 120 volts on it or something like that. That would be a little unnerving. Now I checked this with the hot chassis light, but I'm going to double check with my meter here. Especially this weird capacitor thing they have arranged inside the radio appears to be in a little bit of trouble. This wire does not carry any, any voltage, so we will hook up the output of the signal generator through the recommended capacitor to the end of that wire. It's not really what they suggest in the manual, but the reason they suggest going on the pin of a tube, aside from it being a little better way of doing this, is because they're assuming the radio is so far out of whack that you really have to hunt down the sweet spot on the IF to get the, you know, to find uh, the tuning point. That might be true when the radio was first built, but it's not true now. The radio is largely tuned, so this is just a, a tweakage, a tweakage of it. So hopefully we're going to be able to pump that 455 into the radio just, just feeding it through. A little bit of a rude way of doing this, but let's, uh, let's give it a go. So we need the radio on now. So I'm going to disconnect this wire because my last test was bogus on the wire voltage, I didn't have the radio switched on. I didn't have power supply to it at all, so... Uh, now we're now supplying power. Is there, there's no light in this radio. Oh, there is a little light. Is there? There might be a little light way down under here. Something going on. I'll have to check that out. Maybe it's on the schematic. Don't see it on the schematic. Okay, we'll check this wire out again for safety's sake. Nothing. Pick a fairly quiet spot here. That's hard to do. No such thing. Now we're not hearing anything from the 455. That's kind of weird. I would hope to hear a little bit. Let's tune around here a bit. Nothing. Okay, so my scheme here of trying to ram the signal into the antenna has failed. It's failed. It's, it's a miserable, ugly failure here. So, Okay, we're going to have to do this pin number one on vacuum tube number two. Pin number one. Now i got to tip the whole radio on its side. Okay, I think it's secure enough for me to do this. Uh-oh. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. Put that like that. Okay, turn it off. Shut it off. Fill around. <laughs> That's too big a block. A smaller block. Do the power you know, while it's off. Let's identify where we're connecting this lead. So this would be W 
that's the guy in question. That was pin number two. Pin number two of this one. This tube. Hmm. Here it is here. Pin number one, pin number two. Well, it looks like a grounded pin. Yeah, tell me I'm counting my pins backwards again. Oh, pin number one on... Okay, pin number one. That makes more sense. Pin number one. We'll go right on it. Well, pin number... Yeah, pin number one. Here we are. Okay, so that should feed the IF frequency of 455 right into the radio. Switch it on. And turn down the output of my signal generator fairly low. When you're doing this kind of work, this alignment work, and if you if you do have a signal generator and stuff like this, you don't want to feed in a signal so powerful that it's triggering the AVC. And the reason for that is it just becomes very, very difficult to do an alignment with the radio's sensitivity going up and down, with the ABC going up and down as you fool around with it. So uh, I don't, I don't hear the tone. Let's jump it up one notch here. I still don't hear it. You know what? I didn't. I didn't apply a ground from my uh, signal generator back to the radio. Uh, let's go up a little higher. Oh, now it's working. It does appear to be off. So we'll see if we can clean this guy up a little bit here. Now we're supposed to tune T2. 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 I'm looking at the little chart in the back of the radio here in case you're wondering what I'm doing. T2 is the lower one. This is the lower one here. Oh, I don't have my... Uh... Hey! I forgot one piece of equipment. I need to get my cup of coffee out of here. says otherwise. No information on the book about how to connect the um, your signal level meter. So we'll put it right across. Oh wow, we'll put it across the voice coil on the speaker. Awkward getting in there. Here we go. It's one lead. And connect the other one. I just knocked the uh, signal generator clip lead off. That's all. This, this wire is worrying me. It's going everywhere it shouldn't. Okay. 
Flip leads. Good. This meter is interesting. Um, it's designed for this purpose. There really isn't a zero on it. Um, a little hard to explain that. There really isn't a zero point on this meter. Okay, but you can see it's operating now. We're at 455. Try to max this meter now. Okay, I'm on the upper slug now. Deal there. Now we're supposed to go on pin seven of V one. V one is up here. Pin seven would be seven. Turn down the output of the signal generator. Pin seven. Other transformer. Watching the meter. That's a little odd. What's odd about it is I watch the meter will go up as I turn it up, up, up. Up, 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 and I've hit the end of the run, and it's still got room to go up. So we'll do the other slug now. There we go. Got a good lift on that one. I'm listening to the tonal quality of the sound coming through too. And there's all kinds of interference coming through with it. I'll do the lower slug again. Doesn't make a lot of difference. Oh, you know what? It wasn't at the end of its run, it was just a sticky spot. I'll check the other one again. Even though. Ready? And the upper slug. Oh, we got a little bit of a boost out of that. Okay, so that's the IF tune-up. This thing actually gives you uh, ratings you can expect. 2100 microvolts, things like that. What are we actually reading here? on the output. Point 0.1. So, point 0.1, point 0.03, point 0.03. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I got no idea. But the radio largely works anyway, so we won't worry about that. Now, the next thing to tune to radiate a signal into the radio. So we 
take off the signal generator. And we will get our radiator coil from another radio. Oh, I never did attach a ground from the signal generator to the radio. That's probably why that signal seems so weak to me. I forgot to do that. I don't think it has any impact on the alignment, so... There we are, and we'll put this back here. The antenna's over here, and the transmitting coil will be here. Now, we're supposed to do this at 1460 kilocycles. That's about 1460 on the dial. Now, 14, oh, we're almost there. Not hearing a thing. Okay, so, too weak, too far. Let's move it closer. leads to the antenna here. Okay, let's try again. Come on, little radio. Oh my gosh, 14. Oh, that's where it's supposed to be, isn't it? What am I talking, what am I thinking, what am I doing? 1460. Huh. <sighs> Love it when things work out <laughs> and save me from myself. That's dead on 1460, huh? I just whipped the dial up there. Okay, so let's take a look at the dial. Uh, there's no accuracy in this dial. So I make that out to be 15. I'd say that's 1460 there. Close enough. What are we doing anyway? Adjust, adjusting uh, two trimmers for maximum out, output. C2A and C2B. C2A, those are both on the capacitor. Right up on the top. the tuning part of the capacitor, uh, watching that meter. Oh. <laughs> pretty good increase on that. And now the other one, I'm pretty sure this is the oscillator. I don't know why we should be adjusting it. Yeah. No real reason to adjust it because the dial is so inaccurate. Uh, but we got a pretty good boost off the uh, antenna capacitor. Tune it down to 600. Tune it down to 600 and then do L2. L2. Down to 600. L2. 
L2 on the little chart, it's not on there. L2, somebody show me an L2, T2, T2. T2. L L1, there's L1, where's L2? Did I read that right? L2 slug check tracking of L1. Well, I'm not sure what they mean by that. So there's L1. L2. L2. Hey, they're just kidding around with me here. Okay, it can't be down here in the audio section. It's got to be up here in the radio section. Oh, L2 is right there. So L2 is this oscillator coil. That's up on the top of the radio. Up in there. So, adjust L2, check tracking of L1. And what am I adjusting it for? It's probably to make, I think this is another So we're at 600 here. Okay, that's 600. I don't like the heterodyne, it's hard to work around that. So let's see if we can find a better spot on the band to do this. Oh, wait, 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 just, 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 just think for a second now. Think for a second. So L2 is the oscillator coil, so I'm not increasing the sensitivity of the radio, I'm simply correcting the dial. But the dial is, uh, there's no precision in the dial anyway. So let's not fiddle with this. We'll skip that step until we know there's something wrong with the dial. Uh, so here we want to do these two. We'll check only, check only. What are you checking? We're just telling you to check the two frequencies right at the end. 535 and 1650. Well, we'll do that by tuning in stations with some luck. So, so really, just doing the IF and doing the, uh, the antenna trimmer is really all I want to do at this point on this radio. I want to fool with the rest of it until we have some indication why we should. So take this out of here. And we will attempt to tune in some real radio here. Not so good down the low end. good down here in the shop. Let's put the external antenna on it. Gee, that old uh, Spartan I was just working on did better than this.
radio picking up old music. So that's 640. It's pretty darn close. the six and the seven and you can see a uh, civil defense marker uh, an American civil defense marker just to the right of it is the actual line that you're trying to tune against see the line doesn't move back there I'm gonna get this little parallax air going on $309,990 for a small town. So I think that's 680. There you are, that's 640. You know, it's almost dead on, isn't it? Now I can improve on that. So I think what we need to do is take this radio outside again for another outdoor check. Uh, I think it's finished. Let's look at the temperature on the output tube again. Okay, I saw 140. It's nowhere near the 250 that, uh, that it's uh, rated at. So I think for the most part, uh, i got to clean this thing up here a little bit. This weird antenna thing. Just brush it clean. And uh, we'll take it outside and do a do a final test outside. Oh, 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 yeah. What about taking the front off and cleaning that plastic? And... Okay. Well, we'll take a look at that. Let's take a look at that, and then we'll end the video. Shut it off. So the question is, can we get this front clear plastic piece off without? causing some kind of disaster. Okay, so take a look at it. Let's do it with the close-up camera here. Oops. So you can see, oh, I get it in focus. There's a plastic tab right in here. Where's my focus? Way back here. Yeah, so there's a tab there, another tab there, and two other tabs down here, and I think that's all that's holding that plastic on. Let's so pull the knobs off here. Okay, knobs came off easy. Beautiful. Pull off the big knobs. 
drop them on the floor. That's so good. That's a stupid thing to do. Not recommend it. And these are very uh, kind of a soft plastic. It's not a hard plastic. That's good. A hard plastic might shatter. So. Okay, now to pop this off, I have to push this down and out. Okay, and this one here, down and out. I'm doing it with my fingers. I don't want to use tools. I don't want to have a, a feel for it. Down and out. If we break one of these tabs, it's not the end of the world. Okay, now this one. That was the sound of one of the tabs breaking off. Just what I was afraid of. It's not the end of the world because we can glue this back. But I'm getting more hesitant now about continuing. Just one more tab. Let's give it a pull here, see what happens. Ugh. I don't like the sound of that. Uh, maybe these lower tabs may have been hotter or something. I don't know. to lift it up and push it a bit. <clears throat> I'm moaning, but I'm not putting that much pressure on it. I don't think I'm going to get it. Boy! Why is it so hard to do? There it comes. I didn't like the sound of it. High anxiety here. explanation to the owner about what happened to his radio at this point. Don't, don't do tools, don't do tools. All of a sudden this thing will come flying off and shoot across my shop. I don't want that to happen. Is there, am I missing something? Is there another tab? Is there anything else going on here? I don't think so. tool in there, I think. That did it. That did it in a good way. Sorry if I'm sticking my head in front of things here. Come on. 
Oh, I just, just knocked this side back in, I think. There it comes. Wow. What a process. <laughs> Getting that off there. Ah, maybe. So, cracked this tab. Broke this one right off. But, we now have access to the entire front of this radio. The dust in here and all that stuff. Oh, this whole thing is flopping around. So, I'm going to stop at this point and uh, continue on on the next uh, video. Um, I'm looking very carefully in there. Okay, that's it for here. <laughs> See you on the next video.